And welcome back to the 2020 Travis Roy Foundation Wiffle Ball Tournament, the money count ceremony coming right up. With me is Travis Roy and Sue Bentledge. And it's been uh, a great virtual weekend. Nothing like the real thing, but we've we've had a great time this weekend with the with the virtual broadcast. And this is the moment we've all been waiting for, the money count and Travis's remarks. And take it away, Sue. Thanks, Bruce. Well, first, I want to thank a few folks that helped us put this tournament together this year. Um, you know, I, I heard many of the online uh, games going on earlier. We already think Mike Bailing, but I have to thank him because he had this idea and he ran with it. So thanks thanks to Mike Bailing for putting together the live uh, simulation. That was pretty cool. And then Bruce, you and Adam Pogreen, fantastic job with the vintage replay and all the videos you guys pulled together. That was, that was really helpful to make, make the tournament feel as real as possible. Uh, we had our silent auction committee pull together the online silent auction, which was huge. So Sasha, Sasha Bout, uh, Tanya Carpenter, Helen Murdoch, Kay Maloney, um, Ellen, all the, all the folks that pulled that together and got donations. And we had several teams that donated items as well. Um, social media, this was huge this year. Danielle Williams and Carolyn Rose, they helped retweet all those Better Up TRS videos, get the word out, and just keep everybody informed what we're trying to do this weekend. So. Thanks to our social, um, our social media folks. And then Drew Brownsword, he actually is the one that got together with Boston U and came up with the Batter Up TRF Wiffle Ball Challenge and how we would push that out. So thanks to Drew. And then of course, Lisa, Lisa at the TRF Foundation, she's the one that helps you if your money goes to the wrong place. She tries to get it back in the box and get your team accounted for correctly. So thank you to the TRF Foundation. Um, and then I, I did hear that there was over 250 people that participated in the Better Up TRF. So thank you, all of you that put your videos out and helped us see, you know, what you could hit a wiffle ball over. That was really fun and fantastic. So the money count. Let me uh, let me uh, first break it down a little bit. We had some really good team efforts this year. The team the team money count alone was $247,000. That's a huge amount. We had another 14985 just in non-team donations. We had a private gift of 15000 a second donation of $15,000. And this was specifically for this, the Wibble Ball steering team in specific recognition of uh, Judy Galdi and Jim Rizzo, who will celebrate next year when we're back together in person. Um, there was $17,195 in batter up TRF donations. And there's at least $5,400 in silent auction. That still stays on until 7 p.m. So if there's anything that you want to get a last minute bid on, right after this money count ceremony, go ahead and put your bids in. You have another hour and a half to finish that up. Our total, this is in a pandemic, which is way beyond what we expected, $314,698. So thank wow. you, all wow. the players. All the folks that donated, we really appreciate it. And it was very, very hard to do this year. And you guys blew us out of the park. So we're super thankful. Over $314,000. Unbelievable. Um, Bruce, if you don't mind, let me just uh, pause on that and thank, our, you know, thank everybody. But I also have a few more little pieces of information. I just want to thank everybody that raised money. Um, so first of all, individual recognition. Emily, Emily Ramondi, she, she's the person that has raised money last year also, she raised $4,000. If we were celebrating the 4040 this year, she would make the 4040. She she represents Team Jet Blue, but she's pretty much Team Jet Blue in terms of fundraising this year. So thank you, Emily. You've always amazed us. You did it again this year. Tim Gendron, he's, he has his own separate team just for fundraising. He's actually on our steering team committee. Uh, and he had he, him, along with Bruce, Bruce uh, who's on the call here, Bruce Mosley, raised over $5,000. Um, Mike Moshevitas, some of you know him as Mojo, raised $8,000, 8,040 to be specific. Ali Skelly of the Hard Shells, 10,109. Uh, Jacob Gurdon, uh, 16,943. And then Art Page, always blows us out of the water. Art Page raised $20,600. So these are some of the individual contributions that were mind-blowing and amazing. There's a lot of others out there. If you go on the Wiffle Ball fundraising page, you can see some of the other stats that roll through at the bottom. Top teams, uh, top teams, and I'm just going to mention three here. Um, the Hard Shells raised 
a significant amount of money, $51,000. That's 20% of our total. So Hard Shells, not only did they raise a lot of money this year, they also were the top fundraising team last year. So Hard Shells, thank you so much. You always amaze us. You're always so fun. And I'm uh, very appreciative of your, of your fundraising. Uh, the Point raised 34060 and the Boston Beef, 24855 Um, With that, uh, the Hard Shells will be listed as our top fundraising team this year, 2020. So thank you. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Bruce. Okay, right here. Great. Thank you very much, Sue. That's just tremendous. Uh, in a year like this, we'll get to Travis's remarks. Uh, uh, over 300 are up to 315,000. There's plenty of time more to make a donation and to take the batter up challenge that runs till the end of August. And uh, it's just, it's just tremendous. It, it's not a great year. And we really, uh, uh, four economic conditions aren't the same as when we raise a half a million dollars, but th this makes it more, more, more impressive than ever this year for what, what you guys have done, uh, uh, raising the money, money for this. Uh, we're going to turn this over next. We, next up, we have a, a great, as we usually do, he speaks at our tournament. And we, we didn't forget about Dr. Jason Carmel. So we get a quick video from Jason Carmel. Uh, so take a look at uh, Jason, Dr. Jason Carmel, uh, his Travis Roy Foundation research video coming up next here on Money Counts Sunday and the 2020 Travis Roy Foundation Wiffle Ball Tournament. So thank you all for, for your generosity in supporting the Travis Roy Foundation. Uh, my name is Jason Carmel. I'm a researcher and I've been working on trying to restore uh, arm and hand function after cervical spinal cord injury. And the Travis Roy Foundation has generously supported the work in my lab, which initially has started with um, working out how electrical stimulation should be applied to the brain and the spinal cord to restore movement. Uh, and now very excitingly, we're starting to uh, develop that approach for people. And I just want to say thank you all so much for all your fundraising efforts. Um, now more than ever, research money is critical. Uh, a lot of the funding sources, whether they be state funds or private foundations, have dried up because of um, the fiscal constraints. Um, and the generous support um, allows us to continue this important work. Um, there are more studies now showing functional benefit for people than ever before. And we have some of those studies happening in our lab, uh, very uh, exciting studies showing uh, animals getting uh, Im improved function. Um, and we're excited to take that to, uh, into people. Um, but that requires resources. And in addition to the direct support that the Travis Roy Foundation gives my lab, it serves as a, as a step uh, to the NIH funding, large-scale federal funding uh, that we're in, in competition for right now, very much enabled uh, by the Travis Roy Foundation. So all of the hard work that you've done during this virtual fundraiser uh, gets us a step closer to meaningful therapies. Thank you to Dr. Carmel. And now the guy behind this whole mission and his foundation it's, it's usually Sue that hands him the mic, but I'm going to turn it over to Travis Roy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bruce. Thank you, Sue. Um, what, a, uh, what a fun week we've had. I, uh, I mean, we, we all are um, feeling that lump in our heart and in our throat to, to be watching this, to hearing all the voices we're so familiar with. It's nice to hear Bill Livingstone and Larry, see Larry Rieger just before we went live at five. And um, there's so many, um, so many pieces, this, this tournament. It, um, it, uh, it captures all your senses. You know, we've been talking earlier about just the food and, uh, missing the breakfast, uh, breakfast sandwiches and, and, uh, mass fries and scooters, uh, lemonade. And, um, uh, it's, we're, we're, it's, uh, it's been sad, but, but you guys have helped make, make the most of it. And, uh, and I can't thank you enough for that. Uh, I, um, I, I mentioned this on the captain's call at the beginning. Uh, when we were first starting to kind of re reshuffle and knowing that we weren't going to be able to come together this summer. And, and one of the things uh, personally for me that, that makes this um, easier and uh, to, to know that this many people that all of you 
uh, pour your hearts and souls into uh, the fundraising and this tournament and the foundation and the work we do. And so glad you got to hear from Jason real quick to, to get an update on his progress. Um, but it's, um, th there's so much joy that comes that weekend. And, uh, and I know it makes all the hard work and all the emails and the texts and the, and the calls trying to solicit those, those, those donations, that that's the payoff. You get to come and celebrate the weekend um, and, and, and feel the magic. And, uh, and I hate it uh, for all of you uh, that, uh, that you're not able to be here. Um, I have my own routine with some of the, some of the teams and my cousins. Um, you know, it starts Thursday and, you know, different meals and, and not being at First Republic. And uh, uh, we're, we're, we're missing you greatly. Um, but the fact is, um, we just raised $315,000 in the middle of a pandemic. Um, you guys raised $315,000 in the middle of a pandemic. Um, the foundation is... Uh, you know, it, it's it's scary as, as a nonprofit, uh, nonprofits all across the country, as to how are we going to make this work in uh, the upcoming year. And it's um, it's hard to you know, it's it's you can scale things back, but it's hard to scale things from zero. <laughs> and uh, and to know that uh, this summer that that we're kicking things off um, with a three hundred fifteen thousand dollars in the bank to continue our programs and to think forward to to the research and what we might be able to do um, with our research uh, grants. And, and most importantly, the individuals. Uh, I, I love the individual stories and the people we, we, we touch. And, and I don't mean to bring up the word stories, but it, it, the, they, they continue um, every day. Last week, I, I got a, an email from one of our um, Charity Bean Pot Women Challenge um, participants and, and a good friend of hers, um, uh she uh, her husband um passed away um uh suddenly from a heart attack and incredibly enough five days later uh, her 18 year old son in rhode island um broke his neck uh, at a beach and uh and you just think of that one two punch and you think of um ending up at spalding and and uh but it's such a gift to to know that our name and the work of the foundation that, that people are reaching out to us because we can be a part of the solution. We can be a part of the, the help both in the early stages as well as that, that hope that, that goes on um, through, through the research. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it's hard to, 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 to find the words. I hate using cliches like that. Uh, but what you guys have done um, to, to rally your teams and, and to, to help us raise the kind of money we have um, it is huge relief, and it's also exciting uh, to know that the, the the work and the impact that it's going to have in the days and weeks and, and, and months ahead. Um, so, so thank you. Um, I also just want to acknowledge. I know um, Bruce and Sue acknowledged some thank yous earlier, but uh, um, those that that have participated in the TR Football Challenge. Um, one of the things uh, we, we raised a lot of money, but but maybe more than ever. Um, have we raised awareness um, for what we do? And, and my hope is when you go out next year and, and, and do a little fundraising, more people are going to know about the work and they're going to know about the fun that we have um, and, and the cause. And uh, so thank you for participating in that. I, I think a hot damn, hot damn productions and just their team and what they put together. Um, a lot of, a lot of great, great videos. Um, so, so thank you for that. Uh, it's always hard to, to, we, we've got these great awards that, that we give out every year and we've kind of the committee debated on whether to do it again this year. But, but the fact is uh, you guys showed up um, and, and, and put in the hard work and, and we absolutely want to recognize. So my congratulations to the Hard Shells, the top fundraising team, um, back to back years. Um, that's, that's fantastic. And I'm so proud. I, I love you guys um, and, and my own family, the, the, the good self point. Um, you know, they're kind of stuck with this, but they don't, they don't have to do what they do and, and they keep, keep going at it because they, you know, they want to see uh, myself and Garrett and, and Jack and, and everybody that uh, is paralyzed get out of our chairs. Um, so I'm going to transfer to the, switch over to the, to, to the awards and announce the winners. And the first one I wanted to, um, we'll start with is just the Kim Trahan Fundraising Leadership Award. And uh, we give it um, to the team or participant that personifies the spirit leadership uh, and innovation and tournament fundraising efforts set forth by, by the late um, Kim Trahan, um, who was the team mom and, and leader of the Commons Express, who, who lost her life to cancer in 2011. And 
Uh, I'm sorry we don't have Bob on to, to, to share more of the stories and to make this announcement. Um, but for those of us who had the honor and chance to meet, meet Kim, it was, it was special. And, and, and that team continues to lead um, with their fundraising efforts. Um, now, this award could easily be given to, to any number of people. Um, we have so many incredible fundraising leaders, some that are out on the field and, and others that, that sit in the stands and cheer on, on their family member. Um, I can think of Sharon Downs. I can think of Kristen Long. I can think of Lisa Gurd and Maureen Burgess, Aaron Mondi, Connie Page, Amanda Moshevitas. I mean, there's, there's so many that, um, that play roles um, and, and not even step on, on the field. Um, but this year's winner of the Kim Tran Fundraising Leadership Award goes to a guy that's actually really well known out of the tournament. Um, although with that said, I, I don't know that people realize just how much he, this man does. Um, uh, the dance, the, the dances, he tickles, he pokes, he prods his players and family members uh, behind the scenes to make sure that his team always shows up at Little Fenway, knowing that, um, knowing that his players uh, put in as much effort off the field as they're about to put on, uh, put in on the field. Um, and this team has put up some, some very big numbers over the years, uh, both with total dollars raised, but, but equally so with, with total numbers of donors. They, they, they go after it. And, and this captain encourages his team to compete fiercely for the fundraising title every year. And, and, they, and the results speak for themselves. And I, I spoke to, to one of his players today and asked if he had a comment or anything he wanted to add. And, and he told me the truth is that Art Page uh, was, is, and, and always will be the Boston Bee fundraising and spiritual MVP. Uh, so um, I'm thrilled to, to announce the Kim Trahan Award is, is bestowed to Art Page, the butcher. Uh, congratulations, congratulations, Art. Um, uh, I'll, um, I'll switch to the, to the next award. And um, I got to tell you, it was a lot of fun to be on the, uh, the, the rewinds earlier this week and, and to watch uh, Tommy Long and uh, Joy Rigotti and, um, but Tommy and Eric Long, I'm sorry, Timmy and Eric Long, my apologies. Um, but, but the uh, Sportsmanship Award um, is given a memory of Tommy Long. And uh, again, the heart and soul of the Staten, the Staten Island Yankees who passed away in, in 2009. And due to the kind of oddities of, of this year's event, we're, we're going to go in a little bit of a unique direction um, this person has been a part of the tournament for 10 years now. Um, and boy, has he become a, a big part of the heart and soul of helping to bring our tournament to, to the next level and to a level that I never, never imagined. Um, and I'll be honest in saying that this person, uh, will be a little annoyed that, that we're recognizing because if there's anyone that likes to stay behind the scenes, it's, it's this guy. Um, but everybody gets to watch his magic. Um, if you haven't taken advantage of watching this week's rewind broadcasts or, or even the web broadcasts that we're we're doing right now or or really the past 10 years of live feeds from little fenway none of it none of it would have happened without adam Holgreen um in the pack network uh so thank you adam uh for all you've done for the trf and congratulations on, on winning this year's uh tommy long sportsmanship award um hopefully he doesn't cut the feed right now but uh uh, it is it is so well deserved, uh, and I also have to acknowledge Sam uh, Paul Green, his son, who shows up every year and to tag along in 2020 uh, participant every year. So again, to the whole family, uh, and that's usually uh, in a pandemic we we probably stop there, but uh, uh, we didn't have any any real action on the field. But but this year we're kind of going to do something a little different with our MVP award. Um, and unfortunately there was, as I said, there's no action on the field, but this guy may have spent more energy off the field this year, um, than he usually does on it. Uh, uh anybody that has been on Facebook knows of his accomplishments this year. And just in case, let me give you a quick read. Uh, this man, a uh, hundred total donations, over a hundred total donations. I actually got an email from him today. So he bumped it up even more. Uh, he was over $7,200 just recently, uh, 54 donations of $50 or more, 50-50 club, 24 days in a row of donations, um, 11 days in a row in July um, of, of total donations. Um, you know, he gets his high school class involved. He gets, um, you know, his coworkers involved. Um, and, and I love it. The energy, the fun, the fun that he has with his fundraising to engage his donor base. Um, it's... Uh, 
I love that uh, uh, because I know how hard it is. Um, and if you bring that energy in a fun way, um, it, it makes people want to be a, be a part of it and not only be a part of it for this year, but, but uh, the next year and the next year and, and that energy is contagious. So uh, congratulations, Mojo. Uh, you are uh, our 2020 tournament MVP. Um, so uh, um, again, there, there's more people that, that certainly uh, could, could win these awards this year and recognition. And, um, but I appreciate the committee's input and, and, uh, and, and making the decisions. And it was nice to be the one to get to, to announce those winners. So um, an amazing year. Uh, I cannot wait. This year cannot go by fast enough. I cannot wait uh, to be out there at Little Fanway with all of you. Uh, to get to eat the food, uh, to hear the voices and the, and the big uh, speakers um, in every other part of it, the big, the small, uh, the little. Uh, I hope you will stay safe. Um, be careful uh, for those of us that are paralyzed. Um, you're probably not going to see a lot of us. We're hidden in our houses trying to, trying to avoid this. Uh, the COVID, it, it's not friendly uh, to our lungs. Um, so, uh, but I, I hope by next summer, uh, the family will be uh, connected again. So. I love you guys. Uh, I really do. Thank you for supporting me, my family, this committee, um, the tournament, and, and the work we do. So we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot, Travis and Sue. One last thought. You've done an excellent job here, keeping the meetings together, keeping these things going. Didn't believe that Adam and I could pull this off, but it looks like we did. It did. Thank you, Bruce and Adam. <laughs> Thanks, Travis, for being our inspiration. And uh, and I, I, sorry, Bruce, I got to say, six o'clock, people probably think it's rigged, but six o'clock, for those that have been uh, paying attention to the simulated uh, video game uh, virtual wiffle ball tournament, six o'clock, there is a big showdown between the point. I have no idea how we got in. I asked, I literally asked Michael, I said, you know, you got to, I got to be on it. You got to tell me, are we, did, did he stack the cards here? And he promised me he didn't. He stacked me. Um, I was on the, uh, uh, bullpen by committee team, and he said he gave me a little juice, but that team's long gone. Uh, so, so the family team and, uh, and ESPN uh, 360, they'll be going at it at six o'clock. The links are on the website. Um, as I'm sure Bruce will mention, the silent auction uh, to those that uh, that were part of that um, was awesome. But really, uh, Mike Bailing, uh, his effort this year uh, with that uh, simulated, I, people have had more fun up here watching it than. Uh, texting so that was a really neat uh piece that kind of came together at the end yeah and let max know that his team who probably haven't hasn't won a significant game in three or four years e60 buzz unit will be taking on the point at 6 p.m in the final and and as travis mentioned the silent auction still goes till 7 p.m tonight eastern time get the bids in there's a ping pong ball for the next tournament on the line at a very 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 low price for participants so and uh and once again so you mentioned 250 people at least 250 people uh have taken the trf uh the travis roy foundation wiffle ball challenge trf wiffle ball challenge and, and think about it in a pandemic we we really have about i think it's 250 people with 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 a couple weeks to go uh we usually have 400 participants in the real the traditional wiffle ball tournament so we may have the same amount of participants in that as we do in the real wiffle ball tournament. And once again, uh, the, the number one, one more time, Sue. $314,698. And thanks for everybody that brings these 19 year total to, to over $6.4 million. So we thank everybody. Thank you, Travis. Thanks, Sue. Stick with us. It will take a look at the 10 years, 10 minutes video as we go out. And we'll see you everybody again, August 13th, 14th, and 15th in 2021 uh, with bells on and, and, and whistles and everything we need for another great tournament. Thanks everybody for joining us in all these events all weekend. The uh, MLB The Show final coming up at six and stick with us on this video and bid on the silent auction as well. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night.
Three balls and two strikes. <laughs> we, there we go. Going down to this two outs, bases loaded, Staten Island here, last of the seventh. Express it's leading it. Fly ball to left. And there it is. is. And the Comets Express, Jack. Get any more Your 2010 the Travis Roy Foundation Wiffle Ball Champion. 1-1 one, one pitch. Back to Tyrone. Underhands it to Woodford. And the Staten Island Yankees have won the championship. Staten Island and Joe Tyrone. And Dave Bircher, 10-year members. Rich Coburn, another 10-year member. They win the championship the first time. Strike two, one and two. And Down here, last out. Jack Hammers are one strike away from the championship. And it's popped up, and that's it. The Jackhammers are your 2012 champion, and they go right over to Jack Shattuck in his wheelchair behind home place, the great place for a celebration. Billy Doyle, 3-2 pitch. Strike three, and Boston Beef is the first three-time champion. And for the first time, third time overall, first time and since 2009, first time in four years, the Beef with the championship. This one's hit deep to center, but not deep enough. And the Scott there, the Staten Island Yankees, for the second time in history, are the 2014... Travis Roy Foundation Wiffle Ball Tournament Champions. This one's hit toward left. And he makes the catch is Joe Rivers and the Braintree based Jackhammers are your 2015 Travis Roy Foundation Champions with a 16 to 5 win. They rally around Jack Shattuck. Their captain, and for the third time in history, the second time in four years. A one two long look in. Oh, swung and a miss, strike three. He went with the Australian slider and strikes out Kelly, his 16th strikeout of the game. And the Buckners hold off the Terriers to win their first ever championship. Three and one, the count, two on. Folsom at second. He's struggling with the sun. This one, and here comes the winning run. They, the hot team wins the championship. And Garrett Folsom scores for second on the base hit by Robbie Meslin. And Hot Dam wins their first championship since 2003. Hits this one deep to right, and this one is gone! There you it called is. it, Ken, you called it, Travis. There it is. Patrick Collin homers to right in the Blue Bulls for the first time in their 16 year history wow. are the tournament champions. Wow. Unbelievable. 3 2 pitch. Swung on a miss, strike three. And for the second time in three years, and the fourth time overall, Hot Dam is your 2019 Travis Roy Foundation Wiffle Ball Tournament champion. Okay, the number this year online with teams, 335,930 The total for the 2011 Travis Roy Foundation Wiffle Ball Tournament is, as of 11 o'clock this morning, $377,481. The number for this year's Saturday 1.30 money count is $400,146. The money count for 2013 is... Four hundred thousand, <laughs> four hundred and eighty-seven thousand, seven hundred and eighty dollars. Congratulations and thank you. The number for this year, the Saturday money count, four hundred thirty-one thousand sixteen dollars. Everybody ready? Five hundred ten thousand one hundred and twelve dollars. 
Travis Roy Foundation Wiffle Ball Tournament is $585,000 for the tournament as of today at 11 o'clock. It's a big one. $501,017. I know she let, read like a lot of numbers, but here's the number that counts. It's $575,000. Now remember that our goal for this year was $650,000. As of 11 a.m., we've raised $685,000 and $146. So great job to all of you. There is a spirit that lives on this field every uh, second week of August. If people come with the right spirit, with the right love, with the right uh, uh, thoughts, and it's uh, it's something so special to be uh, a part of. To, to maintain it for 10 years, to not let this, this event be changed by any other dynamic other than to have fun, to raise money for a good cause. Um, you guys get it, and that's why we'll keep this going for years to come, and I'm sorry, but we do need to keep it for years to come until we get uh, some major breakthroughs. Another magical weekend. It's, it's the best weekend of the year. It's just amazing to have been able to witness for the last 15 years, 14 plus years, the humanity, the very best side of life, and the generosity year after year after year. This morning when I was laying in bed, my care attendant came at 6.30 to help aid me and dress me and do everything that's necessary. And when I was laying there, I kind of kept thinking, I could just swing my legs over the bed. If I could just kind of scoop myself in the wheelchair on my own. Um, Jason's right. I'd love to walk. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, but just to have a little bit more independence, a little bit more freedom. Um, you know, we've got some other spinal cord injured survivors that are here. And for all of us, uh, that's what we're hoping for, that, that day when we can just swing our legs over and we don't have to have somebody come and get us ready for the day. And, uh, and what goes on here, it keeps that hope alive. It keeps me thinking that one day it's going to happen. And, uh, and it's special. And uh, it's because of all of you. It's just, it's amazing to have that hope. And to believe and to see it start to come to fruition. So it's, um, it's a slow process. But the fact that you guys not only are giving up, but, but you're doing more each year. Um, and it's just going to make it come that, that much closer, that much sooner. Um, so, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that, but the most heartfelt, biggest hug, love that I can give each one of you for being here. I thank you. Uh, how do you make something perfect better? Uh, you come here, and uh, you walk around, and you take a swing, and you eat some food, and you meet some friends, and... Uh, and you get to experience the magic. Um, I always come back to that word. People drove cross country to get here. I know that people have gone door to door. They have um, spent so much energy raising this money and getting here and being a part of this. And then it explodes right here, right now. And my God, are we lucky to be here to be a part of it? Uh, when you guys show up, to me, it, it means you believe. Uh, you have no idea how important it is for me to know that you believe. Because I, I always end usually the same place. There's, there's a lot of love out here. And, uh, and I feel it like no other day. There's, there's good days, there's bad days. For any of us that are that are paralyzed, and uh, and um, there's never any better day for me than, than this moment right here. We call it the best week of the year, but this is the best day of the year. Uh, the, the research is real; it's moving along. We're building this foundation, uh, as you say, this hope, this hope. Thank God for hope, and, and thank God for you helping to make it more real than ever. We are in a cow field. Uh -huh. <laughs> In Essex, Vermont, 
uh, ra raising seven hundred thousand dollars, six million dollars, just about. It's uh, the numbers are staggering. And uh, but but how do we get here? Um, and I, I just I hope you feel this when I say it. It's because of you. It is because of every one of you. <laughs>